Um, <clears throat> in your remarks, you um, held up to us two of your uh, most heroic figures in Israel, Gideon Levy and Amira Haas. I happen to know both of them. And uh, I found that quite selective. Uh, first of all, Amira Haas and Gideon Levy have nothing to worry about. Uh, Israel is a democracy. Nobody's going to threaten their lives. They are toasts of the town in Tel Aviv. They travel around the world giving lectures, as do you. There is absolutely no risk in what they do in their hypercriticism of Israel. On the other hand, you failed to mention Khaled Abu Tome. You're familiar with him. Now, there is a real hero. There is someone who writes for the Jerusalem Post who is critical of the Palestinians, his own people. Death threats every single day. I would suggest you added him to your heroes. Uh, Number two, okay. And don't be so selective in the future. Uh, uh, finally, uh, what, what I'm interested in. Okay, I'll give you, afterward, I'll give you a full list, all right? Uh, one of the things that intrigues me the most about your comments was something you didn't uh, mention, was, was in, in an op ed in the New York Times, and I hope I have this quote correct that uh, non-Israeli Jews feel themselves once again exposed to criticism and vul vulnerable for things they didn't do. To my ears, that uh, it was kind of a window into your whole view of the world, your Weltanschauung, and, and uh, it, it, it just echoes the words of Karl Kraus and Otto Weininger of the 19th century, who identified who, uh, what they considered to be the embarrassing Jews of the world, the Ostjuden, uh, and how they were making their lives uncomfortable in Vienna and Berlin. And if, if uh, in the words of Thomas Abeckett, if someone would rid me of this meddlesome people, uh, it's, it almost sounds as though that's what resonates in your soul, that Israel is an embarrassment to you, and you would personally feel much more comfortable if it didn't exist. Yeah, to be careful about extrapolating from one line in your head a complete psychological profile. It's more, it's, it's, more than, it's more than one op-ed. More than one op-ed. I am not embarrassed by Israel. I'm angered by Israel. It's a different thing. Just as I have in past occasions been angered by other countries that I've been associated with, including the one I live in right now, this one. I don't desire, I'm not actually aware that I know anyone who desires, though I know there are some people, to see Israel disappear. But yes, I'm perfectly well aware. I can listen to radio in Boston this morning and hear and learn it once again, but I can learn it all over the world at any time, that Israel is presented, and indeed describes itself, as the state of, of Jews. It's a Jewish state. And therefore, the courts to represent me in its behavior. And certainly, yes, it does so. Well, that is not true at all. That's your, that's it's not, your it does, That's your interpretation. Can we, can we let... I think I'd like respond, finish. please. Okay. Israel, when Ariel Sharon went to Paris on the occasion, went to France on the occasion of an outburst of anti-Semitism in that country and invited Jews to come to Israel because it was the only place they had a home. They specifically said that Israel is, as it has always been, the home and the state of all the Jews. Well, if it's the home and the state of all the Jews, then its behavior is, refle is a reflection and reflected in all the Jews. You can't have it both ways. It is, after all, the Zionist claim. I know something about that because I used to teach it. That all Jews should be in Israel. And Israel speaks for all Jews, either those who are there, or those who are not there and cannot speak for themselves, or those, if you like, who are not there and don't realize that they can't speak for Israel's behavior is an embarrassment to Jews in a different way, however, in this country, not, I think, in most other countries. And that is that it serves as a weapon for some members of the Jewish community to attempt to silence the opinions of other members of the Jewish community by saying to them, you are anti-Israel, therefore you must in some sense be anti-Semitic, the two are very close, and therefore you should not be speaking what kind of a person are you, it must be because Israel embarrasses you, perhaps at dinner parties. Now, this is an invented relationship. I'm also long, the Israeli former journalist and foreign editor of Haaretz, was the Washington correspondent for Haaretz in the 1960s. And he tells a story of going to the farewell dinner of an Israeli ambassador, the Israeli ambassador to the 
Washington, who was going home after a long tour of duty. And he asked him off the record at the time. He hasn't published the story, as long as I don't mention names, I'm allowed to come in. He asked him at the time, what do you regard as your greatest achievement while you've been here? It was in the early 60s, it was a crucial turning point. And the ambassador said, no question. I have begun to succeed in convincing the American Jews that anti-Zionism is the same as anti-Semitism. Uh, you mentioned that 